the most magical moment in the gardening year is this moment right here. This is Busby's tray of sunflowers that he planted. So we've got all sorts of sunflowers. I think the first germination through every year is the moment that I reconnect to magic. The fact that you can take a seed, bury it into soil and love it and water it and care for it. And with that love, this happens, new growth, the circle. In fact, I have to confess, I did start singing the circle of life at him <laughs> from the Lion King because, you know, that's what you do. It's where... I see life's magic in its most tangible form. So if you want to practice some magic this month, go and buy some seeds and plant them and watch. Honestly, this moment is wonderful. And if you're not a gardener, please go and plant something. You need to experience this moment of seeing the shoot come through, something that you've planted, and then you'll know that magic is real. So I've just watered it to try and bring it all back to life and I'm going to weed it now and just tidy up generally around, just start trying to get this patio back in order. I've got hellebores here that have got already bloomed because they're early spring. But look, there's all things in here as well. The fuchsia's coming, the clematis is coming. I need to weed that round a bit. Let's just tidy up a little bit. Look. This is looking so much better. Now, somebody was asking me what these are. These are hookeras, and they are brilliant. You can just dig into them at the end of the season and spread them. This is a different type of hookah. You can get them in like silvers and purples. Uh, and these silver ones, I only ever bought a couple of teeny tiny little ones, and I spread them all over my garden. And the same with the deep burgundy ones as well. You'll see them popping up everywhere and they grow in sun, they grow in shade, they grow in semi-shade. Oh, look at the fern. I'm going to see if I can get up on the step and show you this bed. Um, look how pretty it is. It's all coming to life. But there's that corner, a lot more tidy. So I gave it a quick tidy up. I've got to still trim some of this dead at the front. I think, I'm just sniffing it, I think this is lettuce. <laughs> so I planted that up. I don't know whether that's going to do well in there. But I planted that. I had a load of these I put in and there. So you can see it's a lot tidier. I put another piece of hookah in there at the top. The end of the mascari, look. And it's had a good water, so the flowers are starting to come out now. It's been watered. Look, you can see the um, clematis is all beginning to flower, which is gorgeous. The fuchsia's beginning to get some new life on it, which is good. Dogs are crying because they want me to open the gate because I've just unbarricaded it. Look at the table. <laughs> oh, the table is a mess because I have been planting up these. Look, now these are constellation um, petunias. I call them night sky petunias. So I bought a selection of petunias and look. It literally looks like the night sky. So I've got like sort of deep purple and night sky petunias and then those. And what I did, I just planted them up before they before they died because they were in the conservatory and they were getting hot. So these are planted. I had to put new soil in that pot. There's one there. I mean, look at them, aren't they gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. And look at this one. A petunia that survived the winter that's come back from last year so pottering jobs i do want to get all of these pots off because i need to wash the mirrors underneath just to clear all that up and of course it goes without saying i need to wash the table down 
and then just clear the junk off the patio and jet wash that's kind of my pottering jobs around the patio area um i need to clear this off as well uh, but i think today i am going to see if i can find the missing bit for the streamer i seem to have missed a portion of the streamer which makes it unusable so i might need to go and buy a new streamer today which i hope not um and i'm gonna try and what am i gonna try and do carry on tidy in the middle section all of this is junk i've pulled out the grass on the middle section that's ready for the bin let's just start shall we but i just wanted to show you the progress here the petunias planted up along here Listen to the birds, it's about half eight here in the morning. It's going to be a lovely day. It's Saturday. The kids are at their dad's. I didn't go to the caravan this weekend because I had a live yesterday that I needed to be here for because there's no Wi-Fi signal at the van. So this has been designated a garden weekend. So let's get going. I'm absolutely gutted. I've just realised that there are two panels that are broken out of the greenhouse. Oh my gosh, look, this is open. I'm gutted. One of the panels is still in in the one piece, but the other panel is broken. Oh God, I'm so gutted. And look at this. I think it's the tree that's done it. I've got to get in and get that out. See, this is lessons in overwhelm. I've been out here two minutes and I'm overwhelmed already. Right, so I need to focus on one step at a time. One step at a time. Okay, I might be standing in my broken greenhouse, but I have found the strimmer. This is the job I abandoned the garden on last year. I couldn't work out how to put new strimmer cable in and it kept tangling it up. So I'm going to Google that now or YouTube it and see if I can work I it out. Lock, lock the dogs in because they can't stand the strimmer you can see how high the grass is here yeah so i'm strimming the secret garden back look there's another of those hookahs that was a tiny bit dug up last year i might need to move that because th these hostas are going uh really busy now and they get it gets covered look, there's another hookah down there so i need to tidy up around here i need to get in there and pull out some weeds i need to strim let's get the secret garden nicer when tilly comes home it seems to run out of battery quite quickly as it always does but look you can see the edge of a garden. It's run out of steam like me. Okay, let's go put it on charge. So there are almost pathways. Look, almost pathways, almost pathways. That's good. The problem I have with this is me and Tilly, we planted it all up with wild flower seeds and it's hard to get to to weed because I don't know what's wild and what isn't. So last year it kind of got left. As you can see, it's a mess now. I just need to get in and weed it. And if I get a flower, I get a flower. So be So it. I've just checked what this plant was here that was growing in out of this pot. And it's a buddleia. A friend gave me some cuttings of some buddleias and I thought I'd forgot to plant them. But I found one there and there's one over there as well. So I need to find a sunny-ish spot for the buddleias to go. I'm wondering whether to put them kind of down here to dig a piece here and put the buddleia in there i think i might because you can see that is getting some sun some early morning sun and if they get big there's nothing really behind them that they're going to throw into into shadow yeah i'm going to do that right look my mat's out <laughs> to tackle this oh and let me show you these look these have come out i'm sure i planted those as seeds last year i'm sure they're aquilegia um and of course they didn't come out last year because they'd just been planted but they're coming out this year 
So I've got to watch for these beautiful sort of clover shaped leaves to make sure I'm not ripping out any of those, which is good. Now these, I think, I think these can come out. I'm certain those are where so you've checked. And this is garlic mustard. And I don't think I really want it. It's invasive. As you can see, look, it's growing in clumps here. And it can be harmful to some butterflies. So I might be pulling all of that out. Yeah, so these are also called Granny's bod Bonnets, these Aquilegia. Can you see, if I can get it to focus, I've got green fly on there. So... But I don't use any pesticides in the garden. I'm, I might just come out with a little bit of soapy water to try and get those off. And I know what these are in here. Look at all of these. Can you see these? All these fronds going up with these flowers. These are oxide daisies. I just grabbed a handful out of that front bed over there and threw them in at the end of the season. And <laughs> the bed's full of them now. So I've got to be careful of the oxide daisies because I love them. Right, let's stop talking, let's actually do some work. So, you can see I'm digging out this dock leaf here, but around it there's all of these feathery leaves. Now that's actually um, yarrow, common yarrow, you can see it here, which has got magical properties. I love the texture it gives, you do have to try and keep it in check in a garden though. I found Tilly's garden gnomes that guard her gate. I've also found the trowel and some gloves. I don't know why I always leave things around the garden. Hello, Ludo. Um, I'm going to dig out these dock leaves now. Look, this is that wild garlic, garlic mustard plant. I've ripped some out just to clear this bed. I'm going to leave some in, I think. I'm going to rip those out that side. I might just leave these in the garden just in case there's anything that's feeding on them. And I'm going to clear this bed out as well. But look... There's more aquilegia opening and you can see look at the flower isn't that gorgeous you can see what it's called granny's bonnet you can imagine the bonnet round somebody's head it's gorgeous i've moved the buddleia to there i might dig out a little bit there um i'm just checking whether any of these have still got seeds in might just crumble Look, these are all seeds. I'm going to cut these are Rebecca, I think. I'm going to crumble all of those in. Look, I know your family's hidden in there. They need an earth in. But I was so happy to see that acrylegia. And look at this plant coming back. Oh my gosh, this is all about to burst into flower. Now, this one is one I actually bought last year. It's this one. Strawberry fields. So all of these flowers here will be pink. So let's poke that back in so I don't forget what it is. Look, I'm trying to garden with these. But look, now I know what it is. I'm spotting it everywhere. That, uh, that herb, that garlic. So it does need watching. But look, there's more um, oxide daisies spread over here, which is incredible. And here, look, this is all oxide daisies. I'm happy with that. There's stuff coming up there. I'm not sure what it is. Look, the strawberries have spread into the bed there. <laughs> it's just, just mad. Look, you can see this plant here. Oh, my gosh, the ferns are all unfolding. Robin. There's loads to be joyful with including scratchy dogs this is um this is amazing tilly's lights are still working so this red vein dock which i planted in here is a teeny tiny tiny little plant last year just to add some foliage shape has just gone just so <laughs> prolific in a year but look at the light coming through isn't that gorgeous and next to i think this is dead man's nettles isn't it um, which is a ground cover really that was tiny as well but it's filled the whole basket I do love it I might start splitting some of that out and planting that around the garden as well because it's just so beautiful um, 
Yeah, I, I might put a little bit of that over in Tilly's garden. Look at Luna's got in. Luna, come on. That's that's a secret garden, not a dog garden. So that's why I um, partitioned the garden off into what I call a secret garden, because the dogs were simply just churning up the whole lawn into mud. I will put in a photograph of what the lawn looked like two years ago, because what the dogs were doing, they were charging round and round in circles on the lawn area, it killed the grass. It was just ridiculous. With all of the trees and the hedges around the lawn area, I couldn't dig and plant anyway. So what I decided to do, I decided to build some raised garden beds and put some tyres in. That made a pathway. And then I decided to seal a little bit off so I could have a bit of quiet lawn area, which has become Tilly's secret garden. So two years ago, this was just a mud track that the dogs were wrecking. Yes, I'm talking about you two again. So gardening with lurchers is beautiful because you've always got company. Look, wherever I stop, they stop with me. But it is a challenge as well. As anybody who has dogs knows, they're absolutely the best thing ever. But at times, they test you <laughs> immensely. <laughs> Look at them. I seem to have potatoes growing. Don't ask me how, but they definitely are. Those are definitely potatoes. I'm just going to leave them. What the hell? Hmm, okay. Now this underneath all of here is wood avens. So what have we got now? I found a lavender that I planted from seed. And it's grown out where it can get some light. So got some more lavender I might plant some more lavender around it I've also found another lupin to go with that one now these are the very first lupins I've ever been able to grow but Busby planted these from seeds so um we've got the aquilegia in the corner which was pl were planted from seed last year but a rogue potato don't ask <laughs> down here I think these are gladioli bulbs that the neighbor gave me that I shoved in at the end of the season um, we've got the end of some daffodils. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to sprinkle in these, any seed heads. I'm just going to dismantle and just cover it all in. I think these are like, I think they're all right back here, I think. So let's see if I sprinkle seeds in, whether anything will come back. It looks so much better. And we can... We've got the solar light out in the sun. We've unearthed Tilly's little gnome family. The bluebirds out on show. Yeah, it's good. Some of the sunflower seed heads from last year. Oh, where did that go? Right, is this, is this seed? Or is, no, I'm sure. There's seeds in there, look at those are seeds, look. See? Right, let's just grab a few. Shove them right in the centre of here. And let's, let's just see. Let's just see what comes up. <laughs> let's just see. It's evening now. And look. I used the trellis, let's get the brown. I used this trellis from my friend's broken gazebo uh, to make a arbor for the roses. So now you can see the door, which is lovely. And It also opens and closes completely perfectly. So I'm really pleased with that. There's the back off the Frida chair. I had to get rid of it, it was all rotten. So I've got loads of space here now. And if we look over here, yeah. 
And the stepping stones, you can see those again. You can see this path again. I've still got loads of weeding in this secret garden to do. But it's a lot clearer. All of this bed is weeded. I've tied a cord there. I'm going to lift that up in the air and put bunting on that, I think. Um, I've started doing some of that. It's just a lot clearer. Paul's got all the dock leaves up around here and all the dock leaves up down there. So, you've got a path through here now. So it's just so much better. And then of course, to get the weeds out, I was struggling, so I just stopped and tried to work out a way to make that arbor, which is done now. I've swept up down there. I'm trying to get this patio to a point where I can jet wash it again. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna call it a day now. It's about five o'clock and I'm absolutely pooped because I've been out here all day. I might just throw a bit of water on the flower beds and call it a day. But I'm really pleased, look, it's beginning to look like our garden again. Dogs, isn't it? I also did a tiny bit of strimming in the vegetable garden. Just a little bit. And the dogs haven't got out once, which is good. Okay, I'm going to call it a day for today.